Hello and welcome to my new series, How to Solo. There are a lot of solo kill videos of fights that are quite tough to pull off. However, in this series I will attempt to explain just how you can go about doing these for yourself. Now you're probably wondering, oh, why would you want to solo these when you could just get an 8 man team and steamroller? Well, maybe you want Wanderers Tales and PF is dead. I come from Scotland, I play on an NA server, it's always dead in the morning. Maybe you want the orchestral role, or crafting material from a fight, or mount. You don't want to deal with those pesky loot masters, and you definitely don't want to be losing the roles, so for whatever reason, I'm here to try and make your life a bit easier in these endeavours. Now, disclaimer, not every single fight will be soloable, and there may also be easier strats, but these are what I've used, and these are what I've worked. And not every soloable fight will be soloable with every single job, so the title will include the job I've done it on. However, some of these may be doable on multiple jobs, such as the topic of today's video, Second Coil of Bahamut, Turn 4, or T9 for short. So, the items and gear I recommend bringing in here are at least 450 gear, Grade 1 or 2, Tinctures of Strength, or Dexterity, Mind, or Intelligence, depending on your job, but you're probably not going to be able to do this on the healer, so can probably not think about that. And food, you will want Popodo Salad, or Robe Lettuce Salad, or just anything that gives you extra HP, because this is that's the hardest part of this fight. Not the DPS trick at the end, although that is pretty tough. So in this video, I have the current best in slot gear, so I decided not to use potions or food to show you it can be done. Now if you use potions or food, you will get that extra buffer that might even take you over my gear, who knows. As you'll see, it is a very very close call this run, and I will link fed videos of a kill with food, and a kill with food and a potion in the description below. These videos may also help you visualise some of the golem RNG that you may encounter during the fight. Now one last thing you should know before ending here is the Dragoon Opener, uh, as you'll need a heavy burst of the DPS in the last phase to defeat this boss. I will link the slightly modified version that I do in this fight in the description, but just in case that doesn't work for you, you might want to try and do something different, and the only way you can really think about doing that is if you know the rotation yourself, so good luck. Now, I'm going to get into the proper guide here now, so stick them in here. Let's go. So the first part of this is really simple, however, you do have to perform it pretty well to set up the rest of this fight. So just follow the rotation and bring them to around 62, 65% in between there. Do not use the potion in this phase because you will not get it back at all. Now, it's important to note that you may have to life search the Fan Claw instead of the Full Frost. If you have gear like mine, then you're definitely going to have to do that. So, yeah. Now, like I said before, the rotation will be in the description. Although it's basically just the normal rotation, just making the buffs go back a GCD. So you can fit them all in before he jumps away, or she jumps away. So, your goal of this phase is to end with as much HP as you humanly can and have one eye towards the life of the dragon. Now you can miss one eye out of, there's three chances to get an eye and you only need two eyes so don't be a hundred percent worried if you would miss this one but if you do just make sure that you get the next two which could be a bit tougher. So after that we're gonna go into this next phase. So since we're alone the meteors will drop the golems randomly. Now there is some RNG here. Now if you can get all three golems to spawn, you want to kill two of them as fast as you can. If two spawn, then kill just one of them fast. And if one spawns, then you're kind of shit out of luck for setting things up, so you just need to kill that one. However, there are some goals you want to try and meet for these golems. First, you want to be using your AoE combo. Now that sounds really stupid to anyone with a brain, uh, and the reason why is because it refreshes Blood of the Dragon much faster than your regular combo. 
Uh, and the golems will die too fast for you to get Fang and Claw or Wheel and Thrust off. Even just one of those, you're not going to get off on these golems. Even at 4 10 gear, you wouldn't be able to do that. Now, the second goal is missable, but preferable you do it here. As I said before, this is one of the chances we can get your second Eye of the Dragon. The other chances in the second golem phase, as you probably already know, is going to appear. Uh, I've tried to get here, but you can get it later. If you have one golem, you're not going to get here. I'd, I'd take uh, keeping your Blood of Dragon over getting an eye. So my typical planning for this part, as you see in the video, is to pop Bloodbath and Blood of the Dragon to refresh the timer before the meteors drop. Doom spike the first golem, jump, Sonic thrust the second, Mirage dive, and if you have two golems, this will kill them both. If you're free, this will kill two of them, leaving you to refresh more time and HP on the third. And if you have one golem, then skip the jump here because you'd rather use that damage to get more Blood of the Dragon time. Now don't worry, there's one more chance to get your second eye, as I said, and once you've killed all three golems, and your HP is at least 95,000, congratulations, you're still on pace. So, for the meteor drops here, you're going to want to stand on one of these pokey bits to the floor, or in between the pokey bits there's a middle triangle you can see on the floor, it's kind of hard to explain, but you'll see it really easily. So about three or so seconds after seeing the first marker, you're going to want to start running around the arena. Just, just run around as I show in the video, like a circle, and end with those golem drops around the center. So these golems here are pretty much the same as the first, except you have to keep one alive for a while. So if you have two golems, kill one fast, same as you did before. And if you have three, kill the first one with Doom, Spike and Jump, second with Mirage Dive and Sonic Thrust, and maybe Curth and Torment. I didn't mention in the first part, but yes, Curth and Torment you may need to use, but if you've seen the video, you will have noticed that. This will give you more time, and if you haven't got the second die, this is your second chance. And if you don't get it here, then... Well, there's still a chance you could do it if you have the gear, but if you don't, then you might have to reset. That's one thing I should have mentioned at the start, but it goes well same. You may have to die a bunch of times before you realise how to do it and get the practice, but once you do, you should be golden. Now, if you just get one, keep it alive. So what you need to do here is you need to bring this one golem to eat three of these meteors. Uh, you could technically get it to eat four, but you have to be really on the ball. You have to kill it as soon as it is tethered to the fourth meteor. Like, your reflexes need to be faster than Sonic the Spider-Man. Otherwise, he's tethering and you may as well wipe. And, you know, if you've done this before, or if you haven't done this before, if it gets tethered to four, turns big, increases his defense and everything, uh, you could kill it, but it's really not worth it. So you might as well. And this also has its benefit, though, as each meteor does about 24,000 damage on Dragoon. That's a big chunk of your HP, so if you can get it to eat, eat the fourth and you can practice it and get it done then you, that massively lowers the HP bar that you need and practically nullifies it as it's probably the hardest part of this fight and once once if you can nullify that then you're good but I wouldn't recommend it but if you could do it try it so once you're done here you have to stand on one of these nipples I'm gonna call them do not move once you have to stand here, do not move. Uh, your HP needs to be at least 85,000, and that is cutting it close, so try and aim about 8 to 8,000 or higher. But 85,000, and you are still in the game. And if you end up in phase 3 without a high, just like I said before, try it for the practice, but you may end up dying without the third eye. Uh, one thing I want to know note, throughout the first phase, you have to keep an eye on your Blood of the Dragon meter. Um, if it's getting too low, pop Blood of the Dragon to refresh it. You do not want to lose Blood of the Dragon, as it will make your life a lot more difficult. So, you've made it to the final part of the fight. This is it. Congratulations you made it here, but we've got one last thing to do, and that is to kill the boss. So, this is where your rotation and gear 
and the items all comes into play here. Well, I suppose gear came into play before with the HP, but this is where it comes into play. This will last about 30 seconds, really short, but all you've got to do is DPS the bitch down. So before Nail even becomes targetable, you want to put Bloodbath and your Infusion. Oh wait, they're not called Infusions anymore. Tincture. Then just go absolutely nuts on her. All I can say is follow my rotation in the description, maybe look at the video to see what I do, and hope you can burn her down before the second ice ball hits you. This DPS burst can be hard, but with perseverance and practice you should be able to do it. And especially if you do not clip like I do, you should be even fine. And if you manage to successfully defeat her then, congratulations, enjoy the loot and knowledge that you can do this whenever you want. In 5.1 onwards, everyone should have the gear to make the DPS check and HP check a lot easier. Everyone should be 470. So if you can't do it as making this video, don't be too discouraged. Just grab a friend, if you wish, who can cast some type of heal preferably, and make the DPS non-existent. So thank you for watching my wee guide, and I hope it helped you out. If you want to make a request for another fight to solo, or low man, it doesn't have to be solo, let me know in the comments. So good luck to anyone trying this fight now, and make sure you subscribe for more solo guides in the future. Have a good morning, afternoon, night, or whatever the hell they have on Mars, which actually is probably morning, afternoon, and night. Anyway, goodbye. Pet cats.